Hi, I'm Clive Cox. I'm CTO of Selden, and I'm going to take you through a quick demo of uh, various rolling updates on using Selden Core to go between two OS models. So I should just share my screen. Uh, great, so I'm going to do a quick end-to-end -end machine learning demo using Qflow and Selden. Uh, so we're going to use the classic MNIST uh, digit classification task. So we're going to train three different models, a TensorFlow model, a Scikit-learn model, and an R model uh, using Qflow. And those will be packaged up in our Argo workflow uh, to do the training and the image creation and um, eventually the weights we pushed out um, to NFS. So you can find this um, demo all on the Qflow website, on the Qflow example cell and on, on GitHub. Um, so this one's on GKE. Uh, it's the second part, uh, so that's the training, the second part, um, there'll be the inference pipeline. So we'll take those three models, TensorFlow, SkyKitLearn, and R, package them up uh, so they can be managed, the inference on, on Selden, uh, using Red Hat's uh, source to image. Again, those are packaged up as an Argo workflow. So once we've got the image for inference and we've done the training, uh, which I won't go into too much detail in this uh, uh, presentation, I'll show you the actual demo of uh, deploying a single model using Selden. Uh, turning it into an A-B test in real time, and then turning it into multi-unbanded to optimize traffic. Um, so we'll show that you can go through different, uh, uh, different real-time inference pipelines to find in Selden, and those can be changed at, at production time. So with that, I'll uh, take you through the actual demo. Um, so as I said, it's, um, uh, you can find it um, on uh, GitHub on Qflow example Selden. Just could take you a quick uh, run through of some aspects of that uh, GitHub repo. So uh, for the models there, as I said, we've got three models, an R model, a SkyKit learn, and a TensorFlow model. Let's just go into the TensorFlow uh, directory. And for each of those, there's a training and runtime directory. In the training directory, uh, so we have a very simple version of each model uh, written in the appropriate toolkit. So this is obviously TensorFlow uh, to do MNIST classification, does the training and saves, saves out the weights. Um, and that's the actual training step is uh, uh, packaged up into a step to actually um, uh, package up that image uh, to do the training so that it can be run in, inside Argo. So a little script to do that, and the Argo workflow runs this to actually package up that training step um, into a Docker um, container that can be run. And the same for the runtimes. This is the inference part, which is obviously where Selden Core comes in. Uh, the runtime part. Uh, the data scientist would write a little bit of Python code. This is for the obviously TensorFlow one to actually um, do the uh, predictions. Um, in our Python libraries, you simply define a predict function that takes a NumPy array um, to get the predictions. And as you, when you start that class, you can do whatever you need to actually load the appropriate uh, model weights. In this case, it's loading from a particular location it expects um, to be available. And I'll show you how that's packaged up. Um, again, there's a little script that we run as part of the Argo pipeline to actually wrap that uh, code into a into a, a, a Docker image that can be run inside Selden. Um, so um, we're using S2I in Selden source to image to package up that uh, piece of code um, and turn it into a Docker image that has the appropriate dependencies that can run inside Selden. And again, that can be part of your CI/CD flow. In this case, we're using Argo uh, workflows. So it's true of both the um, of um, all the models uh, and the similar uh, run times and training steps as, as for each of those. I won't go into the details of the other two. Um, and then the rest of the repo has notebooks, which I'll go. To, I'll take you through now to actually show you the training and the um, serving aspects. And there's uh, some scripts in here to actually set everything up. Um, the actual, uh, if you look through the uh, documentation, there's a script to actually create everything on uh, GK. That's the whole demo with Qflow installed and all, all the appropriate components, including NFS. Um, so you can run through this um, and get that everything running. You just need to copy this um, env example, set up a few environment variables uh, for your local setup, and then you can just run create demo and all create it for you. And when you're finished, delete demo. Um, so obviously I've run that script, I've created a Qflow, everything's running um, on a GK uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, I won't go too much into the training. There's a notebook, as I said, you can run through to run the training. It's basically going to run a series of Argo workflows uh, for each of the actual steps. And we can look at the Argo workflow for, in this case, the um, TensorFlow one. 
Um, I won't go into detail, but basically that, that basically packages up the, the code I showed you into Docker image. And then eventually in this case, it's going to use the um, TF job uh, CRD, which is part of uh, Qflow to actually train that um, on, um, train that on actual, on the actual um, cluster. And there's similar ones for the SkyKit learn model, uh, another Argo workflow to actually package up that training code um, and then run it at the end um, on the cluster to actually do the training. Um, so great, so that's that. Um, so now we'll just go on to the serving part. Um, and so what we're going to do is just first deploy a single TensorFlow model. So just looking at a graphical representation of that, uh, simply which is a very simple uh, inference graph of the a sim single TensorFlow model, which will be started, and then we'll get uh, rest and geography protection, uh, predictions from that. Um, so how do we actually define that in Selvin? So we'll look and look at the actual, uh, the actual graph in terms of what you need to define. Um, so this is the actual Selvin deployment custom resource. There's two parts. Um, there's a graph section where you define the components of your graph here. It's very simple. We just have the TensorFlow model. Um, it's our only component. And then we have a pod template spec where we're defining how that image um, and all dependencies it needs. So in this case, obviously, we've got the image, which has been packaged up as part of the Argo workflow in this classifier in version 0 0.2. Um, it requires a volume mount to load its model weights. So it's expecting it to be able to uh, mount a volume on slash data. And that's NFS. This is where our training steps have pushed their model weights in this case. So we add in that NFS volume to attach it at that point. That's pretty much it. That's the whole uh, definition. And you can push that out using cube control to actually apply that to the cluster and sell them all create the appropriate underlying resources to manage that, set up the actual endpoints. So that's actually been done already to save time. And so I can now just run um, some actual prediction requests. These are just individual prediction requests. So in this case, we take a random digit, uh, nine in this case, obviously we'll send it to the model over the exposed um, exposed uh, API endpoint. Um, and this is the response we got back. There's various parts of metadata that comes as part of the uh, standard seldom response, including a request path for the actual um, images it went through on this particular prediction. Obviously in this case, it's just going through the TensorFlow classifier image. Um, we have a unique prediction ID, and then we've got the actual data payload that's come back from the actual model. It's a bit hard to understand that payload raw, so I've just re, uh, reprinted it out here. And as you can see, uh, the uh, classification for nine came up with the highest probability, 0 0.69. So that's using REST. There's just a bit of underlying code which you can look at uh, just using REST to send uh, to the endpoint. We also uh, support gRPC and Selden. So we can send a gRPC request, and it's very, very similar uh, in terms of the actual metadata and everything that comes back. So that's that. And then as part of this uh, demo, I've started a, a simple load test. That's running, so that's, and to, to show that's running, we can go to the Grafana dashboard that we have that comes as part of a open source, it's basically just an example of Grafana and Prometheus setup with a, 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 a dashboard that shows that we're exposing various metrics automatically as part of um, your running deployments. So here we have that deep, uh, we have that TensorFlow model running. You can see around 100 requests per second going through it. Um, then on the right, we've got the latencies uh, graphed here. And then also as part of this load test, basically what we're doing is we're sending in random digits and the load test is seeing uh, what was predicted and it's checking whether the model got it right or not. And then it's using our feedback API uh, to send in a re reward of one if the model got it right and zero if it got it wrong. And then that feedback is actually being graphed here. So basically you can see a sort of proxy of basically rolling accuracy. So here the, the model is running about 91.9% .9 accurate, which is not great for MNIST, but these are just sort of out of the box models. We haven't tried to optimize them at all. It's really just for illustration of different models deployed in production. So that's running. So we've got some, we've got some predictions running through there all the time while we go through our um, actual setup here on the actual um, serving notebook we're running through. So we've, we've done that step, so I'll skip it. Now what we're gonna illustrate is you can change the graph to a actual A-B test. Um, so here, what we're going to do is change it into this graph where we're going to have two models, the TensorFlow model and the SkyKit Learn model, and we're going to put it behind the standard Selden component around the AB test. We're just going to split the traffic between the two. 
So I'm going to apply that now to a safe time to, while I'm dis discuss that. So we'll just apply that graph over the standard Kubernetes API and we'll uh, uh, come back and check it's running in a second. So I'll just show you that graph now and then we can uh, walk, walk our way through it. So what we've changed on the graph is that now the the graph definition, we've got two, a section of the two models, obviously a TensorFlow model, SkyKit-Learn model, which is our children of a random A-B test, which is going to split traffic 50-50 between the two models. And in our pod template spec, basically, obviously, we have the two images, the TensorFlow one and the SkyKit-Learn. And both of them require volume mounts uh, for their model weights. And we've got the same volume uh, uh, NFS uh, volume claim there to get those model weights uh, loaded in our NFS volume, NFS1. That's basically it. Um, so that's the graph change to allow it to be A-B test or quickly check. So now we've seen we've done a rolling update. Um, so the new uh, uh, deployment is running and the previous one is uh, being stopped. Um, so we can now um, send in some requests. So we'll send in a particular, just a single um, uh, REST request. And the only difference you see on a single raw request is you've got a bit of extra routing data here. So this is saying that it, the, it went for a routing component, random A-B test, and this is the child that was chosen for this particular request, the routing uh, uh, component made. And you can see in the request path, it's gone through the random A-B test and it's gone through the um, TensorFlow model. Um, so the, um, as, as we do it, you can, you can run different requests and um, this will go through different, um, um, so we should get different um, data back as we push traffic through. And to illustrate that, uh, we'll just run a little test uh, by firing off 100 requests to the actual um, endpoint. Uh, this, in this case, this is just using REST requests, and we'll, we'll just do a little graph of where the actual requests are going, which of the two children that we set up, uh, the, the TensorFlow or the um, SkyKit Learn model. So here you can see that, um, yeah, it's doing as expected. It's, it's pushing traffic between the two models roughly 50-50%. Um, and if we look at our um, dashboard, if we update that dashboard, uh, so we should see it updating now, uh, changing. So we've, uh, we've seen that we've got a new model coming in, the SkyKitLearn model, whose traffic is ramping up to around 50 per second. Um, and we see obviously this, the um, TensorFlow model has now dropped to about 50 per second. There's traffic that's been split between the two. We have new latency metrics coming in there for this new model and uh, accuracy coming in there. So we'll go back to our notebook and now we'll do a rolling update to a multi arm bandit. So this is the actual graph we're going to create. Um, we'll actually just apply it straight away so that we can, again, save time. I'll uh, just do that. Uh, so this is a graph. We're going to have all three models now, the SkyKit, um, TensorFlow, and R model. And we're going to put them behind a Excel and Greedy multi arm bandit, which is trying going to tr send requests to what it thinks. It's going to try and work out which is the best model and send most of the requests to the best, the best model. So it should be doing something slightly different. Um, to the A-B test, as it's got a bit more of, um, intelligence to what it's trying to do. So this is the graph definition you'd create to create that. Um, so if we go down here to the, to the um, graph definition at the bottom, uh, now we've got the three children, the SkyKitLearn model, TensorFlow model, R model. And instead of an A-B test, we put it behind a Psylum Greedy router, uh, which takes a few parameters, including the Psylum value, 20% to the um, models it doesn't think is best, a few other parameters. And then in the pod, uh, template spec section, uh, obviously we've got the, again just the three uh, images, and they all they all need to all need the um, volume mounted, and we've added in the image for the open source uh, multi arm bandit of Southern Greedy, which comes as part of Seldom, as that uh, image referred to there. So that's really the graph, updated graph definition, and um, yeah, you see that it's done the rolling update. So now we should be able to send requests to this new updated graph, and really. It, and just in terms of the raw, raw uh, data that comes back, the only difference you'll see is that we've got different routing now. It's gone through the Psylum Greedy router, the same which child it took, uh, chose to do. And you see that the request path has gone through that as well, that image, the Psylum Greedy uh, router and the TensorFlow model router. So just to um, show that there's a difference to the A-B test, we'll do the same thing. We'll uh, just uh, push 100 requests through the system. And now, obviously, what we hope is that the Epsilon Greedy router will start to understand um, which, which models are getting the best feedback. Because if you, if you remember 
um, I'm sending feedback it, uh, to tell the actual inference graph whether the actual models get particular predictions correct or not. And that information is used by the silent greedy router to say, okay, this model is performing better than the other ones. And it will then uh, hopefully push traffic to the actual best model of things at this present time as it's seeing that feedback come through and it's collecting statistics and what are the actual best models. So as you can see here, it's, if these, there's three children and it's chosen child number one and slot number one to send most of the traffic to, and that's actually the TensorFlow model. So it's doing the, the standard of silent greedy um, algorithm to sending most of the traffic, 80% to that model, and it keeps sending about 20% of the traffic to the other two models randomly, just in case the situation is changing and uh, it needs to change its statistics if one of the other models begins to get better. So looking at the actual dashboard, we can now upload it again, uh, the latest dashboard, and you can see now the other components will be coming in. So we've got the R model, if we just started coming in there, and obviously we've got the other ones uh, coming through, and it's, uh, the traffic is being pushed based now, based on the Epsilon Greedy router. So that's really uh, the demo. So we've shown uh, in terms of the demo today, quickly on Seldon, uh, we've, we've taken you through um, it's a whole setup where you can train on Qflow. I haven't gone into too much detail of that, but it's standard Qflow, and you can run other workflows to train there. Um, and then we can package up our models um, into Seldon, manage them, and change them in, at, at runtime between different settings. This really shows you that you can change, uh, your DevOps can change what's running, and they uh, and go through an iterative process of changing the production rollout, uh, all defined in the declarative graphs and Seldon deployment custom resources. Um, which you can then go through and change what's running in real time. So with that, um, hopefully you've um, found that useful and if, uh, we'll, we'll love to have feedback and uh, there's a few other, uh, um, uh, a few other uh, recordings you can go through to get more detail on the underlying solvent technology um, and other things. So feel, feel free to give us uh, feedback.